In the first video, we saw how to visualize error boxes, how to draw the max slope line and the min slope line with this insert, and then illustrations, and then shapes, and then pick this line button. We also saw how to pick two points on each line and add text boxes showing the coordinates. Next, let's have Excel calculate the slope for the red, the min slope, and the intercept for the red. Then it'll find the slope and y-intercept of the purple line. In other words, for the max slope line and the min slope line, we'll have Excel find the intercept and the slope value. So here's how that works. You have a first point and a second point. Each point has an x value and a y value. So I'm doing purple first. Point 1 is uh, point 0.15 comma point 0.72. The second point is 2 comma 1.22. Let's do the same thing for the minimum slope, the red line. The first point on the red line was 0 comma 0.84. Here's that data point right here. The second point was 2.3 comma 1.16. Okay, so here's how you find the slope and the y-intercept. You type equals slope open parentheses, then you select the y's, not the x's, but the y's go first, hit comma, and then select the two x points. Close your parentheses and hit enter. Do the same thing for the intercept, except you simply type equals intercept open parentheses. Select the y's, hit comma, select the two x's, close your parentheses and hit enter. Now, because it's the same formula down below, you can copy this to the same exact corresponding location. And if you check your cells by clicking into the formula bar up here, then we see, yep, they're doing the Y's first, that's the blue, comma, the X's, that's the red. And we can check this formula too. Look at the box, the, the formula bar on the top. You have blues, comma, reds. Then we look over here, yep, blues are the y's, that's correct, red, that's the x. So when it comes time to explain this in your report, um, you don't need to show a sample calculation. You don't need to say, here's how I calculated the slope. You don't need to show y2 minus y1, all of that. You, none of that's gonna be part of your report. Just say simply that Excel calculated the slope and the y-intercept using the points on the graph and then you want to you know, copy this graph into your report. Now here's the problem with copying this graph. See if I move it, these things don't move with me. So you can't copy the entire graph and expect you know, these lines to come along uh, with the graph. Instead, what you need to do is, let me move my screen down. You'll need to click on the Windows button, type snipping for the snipping tool, Okay. This is a screenshot app. Click on New Snip, highlight, drag across for what you want to take a snip of. That's pretty good. And then you can edit, copy, and then edit, paste into your Word file. That's the best way to, um, you know, to put your max min slope graph into your lab report, into Microsoft Word, is using the snipping tool. Okay, so that's how you do max and min slopes. Um, once you find the maximum slope, maybe I should call this max, whoops, max slope, and this would actually be, let's see, which one is the maximum? This one is the maximum intercept, this is the minimum intercept. Here's the minimum slope, and the maximum intercept. You need to find the uncertainty in your slope. So absolute uncertainty in slope. And you can show this calculation in your report. You want to show this. But it's just the half range value. It's the biggest minus the smallest divided by 2. You want to round that to two sig fi uh, 1 sig fig. And then the slope you have in your formula, like when you say, here's my final function, you want to make sure that slope is rounded to the same decimal place as this uncertainty. 
But in addition to the absolute uncertainty, the percentage uncertainty in slope tells you about random error. After all, the uncertainty is coming from these error bars. And those error bars, right, that's how you drew your max and min lines. Those error bars tell us about how much fluctuation each trial had. So this is a really important value, this percentage uncertainty, because it tells us about random error. So let me go back and I would need to add the trend line back in. Hmm, let's display the equation. Here's the equation. Okay, already, look at that. My slope has too many sig figs. I need it to be rounded to this place because that's where my absolute uncertainty is rounded. So I would call this 0 0.20. And how about my y-intercept? Well, let's get the uncertainty in the intercept. Same thing, it's the max minus the min over 2. Okay, let's round that to one sig fig. Oops, there's the first sig fig. And okay, 0.08, so I have to round this likewise to 0.79. It rounds up because the next digit was a 5. Okay, um, you need the percent uncertainty in slope. Percent uncertainty is just the absolute uncertainty divided by the value itself, which was 0.20. Wow, that's a high percent uncertainty. Seems like I had a lot of random error. You don't need to find the percent uncertainty in the y-intercept. Um, we mostly just focus on the slope. But having this absolute uncertainty is helpful because, you know, maybe you look at this equation, maybe you're inclined to say, hey, 0.79, that's so close to zero. Well, is it? Not really, if this is your uncertainty in the intercept. So the intercept helps us evaluate how far off our, in, our uh, Sorry, the uncertainty here helps us evaluate how far off our actual our experimental y-intercept is from you know what we expected to get. Okay, thanks for watching.